Story 1 Last year I attempted to sell my 2007 Mercury Mariner, which was in pretty good shape despite having a lot of miles and being rather old. Nonetheless, it ran very well and was a reliable car. Opting to list it on Craigslist due to previous positive experiences buying cars there, I took several pictures of the vehicle and posted the ad. On the second day I received a text message response from a man named Owl, expressing interest in purchasing the car. He appeared confident about it from the start, and since I had set a reasonable price, I provided him with my address for a viewing. Living in an apartment building, I didn't perceive any risk in sharing my address, as the complex had multiple buildings, making it unlikely for Owl to determine which apartment was mine. We arranged for him to visit the following day after his work at 9 p.m. Preparing the car for the viewing, I cleaned it out in anticipation of the potential sale. When the appointed time arrived, I left my apartment and headed to the parking lot, where Owl soon parked nearby. He emerged from his vehicle, a burly man adorned with numerous tattoos, standing about six feet tall and weighing around 250 pounds. After introductions, I showcased the Mariner to him, and he inspected it thoroughly. Following a brief period, Owl expressed interest in taking it for a test drive. Accompanying him, we drove around the block and nearby streets. He conveyed satisfaction with the vehicle, leading me to believe a sale was imminent. Upon returning to the apartment complex and parking the car in its original spot, Owl unexpectedly announced that he needed more time to consider the purchase. Disappointed by the sudden turn of events, I reluctantly bid him farewell. As we parted ways, Owl surprised me by asking if he could use my bathroom quickly. This seemed sketchy, I thought to myself. Why did he think it would be okay with me for him to use my bathroom? I voiced my concern, saying no to his request, and started walking away. The situation felt suspicious, and I was afraid it might be some sort of setup. I definitely didn't want this guy coming into my apartment. He lingered around by my car, and although my apartment building had both a side door and a front door, I decided to head towards the front. I left him standing there and made my way inside. There was a slight fear that he might follow me, but when I glanced back upon reaching the front doors, he was nowhere in sight. This reassured me, and I entered the building. Once inside, I turned right and entered the elevator, taking it up to the third floor where my apartment was located. Stepping off, I started walking to the left, but then I spotted him entering the hallway from the door, at the end, leading to a stairwell. What on earth was he doing here? Initially moving towards my door, I saw him heading in my direction. I quickly changed course, turning and walking the other way. Suddenly I heard him start running towards me, prompting me to sprint to the end of the hallway. As I reached it, I darted into the stairs on the opposite side and descended. With Owl in pursuit, I made my way into the underground parking garage beneath the building. Racing across it to the far end, I managed to gain some distance. Despite this, I could still hear him chasing after me. Reaching the stairs on the other side, I ran up to ground level and exited through the side door. Once outside, I hurried to my car, got inside, and drove away. Calling the police as I left, I informed them about the situation. After circling the nearby streets for a few minutes, I returned. Owl's car was still there, but he was nowhere to be seen. The police arrived shortly after, and I didn't re-enter the building until they did. To my surprise, they discovered Owl attempting to break into another apartment. It became apparent that he had never been interested in buying my car he was likely planning to rob me or worse. Story 2 One time, years ago, I was in the market for a TV and decided to browse Craigslist. I often found great deals or even free items there, although caution was always necessary. Upon discovering a promising ad for a reasonably priced TV, I reached out to the seller, expressing my interest in purchasing it. Within an hour, I received a response from a woman named Joy, confirming that the TV was still available. She provided an address and instructed me to come over the following night to make the purchase. The address seemed to be in a nearby neighborhood, so the next day, I prepared the cash and headed there. Arriving around 7 p.m., I parked in front of the house, situated in what seemed like an average neighborhood. When I knocked on the door, it was swiftly answered by a woman in her 30s with dark hair. She welcomed me inside, apologizing for the mess of boxes strewn around the living room. Joy mentioned that the TV was in her bedroom and led me down the hallway. 
Opening the bedroom door, she gestured for me to enter. However, upon stepping inside, I realized the room was empty. Before I could react, the door slammed shut behind me, locking me in. It all happened so fast Joy hadn't even entered the room. I attempted to open the door, but it was locked from the outside. Confusion and panic set in as I knocked and called out to Joy, but received no response. After several futile minutes, I accepted that I was trapped. With no furniture in the room, I was left alone in an eerie silence, wondering what was happening outside the locked door. I grabbed my phone and attempted to call my friend, but I couldn't get a signal. That seemed strange. Trying to open the door and calling for help yielded no response it became evident that nobody was coming to my aid. Puzzled and anxious, I scanned the room, wondering what was happening. After several minutes, I heard noises emanating from outside the room, seemingly from the living room area. It was Joy and a man conversing, although I couldn't discern their words. Despite yelling out, I received no reply. Frustrated, I tried to open the window, but it wouldn't budge, further fueling my anger. Returning to the door, I pounded on it fiercely, desperate to break it down. Suddenly, a man's voice from down the hallway shouted at me to stop. Unsure of what these people were capable of, I hesitated briefly before taking action. Retrieving my phone, I turned up the volume and played the most annoying alarm noise, placing it at the far end of the room. Concealing myself behind the door, I waited. Within moments, footsteps approached the room, and the door swung open, revealing the man. As he moved towards the noisy phone, I emerged from my hiding spot, darting past him and fleeing the room. He attempted to grab me, but I narrowly evaded his grasp. Racing down the hallway, I encountered Joy in the living room, who tried to impede my progress. Dodging past her, I reached the door, with the man now in pursuit. Swiftly unlocking my car, I jumped inside and sped away. Unfortunately, I had left my phone behind, rendering me unable to call the police immediately. Stopping at the nearest gas station, I entered and asked the employee to contact the authorities. When they arrived, we returned to the house, where my phone was found abandoned on the street nearby. The perpetrators were nowhere to be seen, and it was revealed that they didn't actually reside in the home it was rented by someone else. Unsure if they were ever apprehended, I discovered that the Craigslist post had been removed. After that harrowing experience, I vowed never to use Craigslist again. Story 3 Roughly two years ago, I decided to sell my old phone on Craigslist after upgrading to a new one. The phone was only two years old and in good condition, so I thought it would attract buyers. After considering eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist, I opted for the latter, prioritizing a quick sale over making a profit. Listing the phone at a reasonable price, I received a text message expressing interest within a few hours. The potential buyer, Molly, seemed eager, so we arranged to meet the following day outside a local strip mall, conveniently located for both of us. When we met, the transaction went smoothly, and Molly purchased the phone without any issues. Everything appeared normal during our brief interaction, and there were no red flags. However, things took a strange turn in the days that followed. Molly began texting me, initially asking me to come over and then inquiring if she could visit my place. It was unexpected and out of context, considering our interaction had been solely about the phone sale. At first I wondered if she had the wrong number, but then she mentioned my name, indicating she was indeed contacting me intentionally. I had no interest in pursuing any further interaction with Molly beyond the sale and her persistent texts, which continued late into the night and into the next morning, left me feeling uncomfortable and confused. Once again, Molly persisted in her attempts to come over, ignoring my previous attempts to deter her. Feeling increasingly uncomfortable, I lied and told her I had a girlfriend, hoping she would take the hint and leave me alone. However, Molly disregarded my statement, insisting it didn't matter and continued texting me as if we were close friends, asking about my activities. Feeling bewildered by her behavior, I asked her to stop, but she became angry and started hurling insults at me. Frustrated and alarmed, I decided to block her, hoping to put an end to the unsettling situation. Little did I know, the ordeal was far from over. Later that same night, I heard a knock at my front door. Peering through the window, I was stunned to see Molly standing outside. How did she find out where I lived? It was alarming to think she might have followed me home. Reluctantly, I answered the door, intending to firmly tell her to leave. However, as soon as I opened the door, 
Molly launched into a tirade of curses and refused to leave. Growing increasingly aggressive, she attempted to enter my house. In a panic, I slammed the door shut and locked it, but she persisted, banging on windows and trying to force her way inside. Realizing I needed help, I called the police and waited inside. Molly continued her relentless assault on my home, banging on windows and attempting to open doors. Even when I tried to reason with her through a window, she remained undeterred. Thankfully, the police arrived and were able to intervene, putting an end to Molly's alarming behavior. Subsequently, I obtained a restraining order against her, as I couldn't comprehend why she fixated on me so intensely. I suspected drugs might be involved, but I couldn't say for sure. This experience served as a stark reminder to exercise caution when using platforms like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Story 4 For context, I reside in a tranquil neighborhood characterized by spacious properties, typically spanning two to three acres each. During the incident I'm about to recount, my wife was away, leaving me alone at home after I finished mowing the lawn. As I checked my phone, I noticed a text from an unfamiliar number, claiming to be from Craigslist and asking if they could visit. Now, I had never used Craigslist, and I doubted my wife had either. I replied, informing them they had the wrong number, and that I didn't use Craigslist. However, their response, containing my exact address, unnerved me. They followed up with, This is your address, right? I was perplexed and chose not to respond, hoping it was some sort of prank. Several hours later, I received another message from the same number, asking if they could come over. I promptly replied, declining their request and stating that I had nothing for sale. Hours passed before I received another message around 10 o'clock, simply stating, I'm here. This message sent shivers down my spine. Curious and cautious, I moved to the living room and peered out the window, but the darkness of the night obscured my view. I didn't see any cars in my driveway or on the road. Returning to the family room, which adjoined the living room, I sat down on the couch. Moments later, I received another text instructing me to check the front window. With a sense of dread, I complied and stepped into the living room. There, standing outside the window, was a man staring at me with wide, unsettling eyes. I didn't recognize him at all. In a panic, I dialed the police. The man remained motionless for a minute before suddenly darting away. By the time the police arrived, he had vanished. After blocking the number and ensuring my safety, I remained vigilant, checking the front window repeatedly, but he never returned. To this day, the incident remains a mystery. How did he obtain my address, and who was he? I have no answers. Story 5 I have a Craigslist horror story that I'd like to share, serving as a cautionary tale for those using such websites. A few years ago, I was selling my old MacBook Pro laptop. It was still fairly new, and since I had received a new one from work, I decided to put it up for sale on Craigslist for $1,000. It was a reasonable price considering its condition and value. Within 24 hours of posting the AD, I received a text from someone expressing interest in buying the laptop. I confirmed the price of $1,000 and suggested meeting in a public place for safety reasons. The person proposed Walmart which seemed like a reasonable choice due to its high visibility and foot traffic. However, what raised a red flag was the person's insistence on meeting at 10 p.m. or later, claiming they worked overnight shifts. Despite my reservations, I agreed to the meeting time. When I asked for their name, they identified themselves as Derek, providing only a vague description of being of average height with dark hair. Despite the uncertainty, we settled on meeting at 10.15 p.m. the following night at Walmart. Arriving shortly after 10 p.m., I parked in the middle of the parking lot, which by then was eerily quiet as the store was set to close at 11 p.m. I believe I texted Derek to let him know that I was at the agreed meeting spot. However, he didn't respond for a while, leaving me waiting and growing increasingly frustrated. It wasn't until around 10.30 p.m. that he finally replied, informing me that he would arrive in about 15 minutes. Despite my annoyance, I decided to wait patiently hoping that selling the laptop would make it worth the wait. As time ticked by and it approached 11 p.m., I was on the verge of leaving when Derek finally texted me, claiming he had arrived and was at the back of the parking lot. Scanning the area, I couldn't spot him from where I was parked, eager to conclude the transaction. I drove towards the rear of the parking lot, where several cars were scattered randomly. Unsure which one belonged to Derek, I parked in a random spot and asked him again for his location. 
With no immediate response from Derek, I suddenly spotted a car approaching. Assuming it was him, I watched as it drew nearer, only to realize that the driver and passengers were all wearing black ski masks. Sensing danger, I swiftly drove away, prompting the car to follow me briefly. However, as we reached the front of the parking lot, I noticed a police car stationed there. Seizing the opportunity, I drove towards the police car, prompting the car behind me to make a hasty U-turn in the narrow parking island. Thankfully, the ploy worked, and the suspicious individuals disappeared. Relieved, I drove home and promptly blocked Derek's number. Subsequently, I removed my laptop from Craigslist and opted to list it on eBay instead. Story 6 This happened about three months ago. My roommate and I decided on getting a used couch, so I thought Craigslist would be a great place for used furniture. I scrolled through about three pages before finding a black leather couch. It was in really good condition and had a really good price, around $200. I told myself this was too good to be true. And man, I should have listened to myself. We arranged a price, and the guy told me to meet him at his place over email. My roommate was out working overtime, so I had to go alone. The address was a little ways out of town. The house was surrounded by trees. You had to go through the drive through to be able to see it. I got out of my car and knocked on the door. This house was different. It was small and wooden and looked pretty eerie. When I knocked the third time, I heard creaks on the wood floor coming from inside. Anyone could tell it was footsteps, but it sounded like they were tiptoeing. Then I heard a faint muffled voice through the door. Hey, are you the couch guy? But they sounded pretty rushed. So I responded, yes, yes, I am. He said back, okay, come around back. The couch is there. I felt a little weirded out by it, but I brushed it off. When I came around back, I saw something that I won't forget. I saw four tall men dressed in black robes with their hands together, and in front of them was a pit with a hatchet chain on it. Then I heard the same voice say, where's your friend I booked it out of there, and frantically shoved the key in my car and started it. I looked out the mirror and saw the front door fly open. I shifted into first and floored it out of there. The thing that makes me uneasy to this day is that in the emails, I never told him I had a roommate. Story 7 I was about 12 years old, looking for some craft storage since I got a lot for Christmas. The ones at the stores were really pricey. So my 27-year-old sister and I looked for someone on Craigslist. We found someone offering a huge tote for only $10. That would mean getting a $90 discount. So we checked it out. The person lived relatively close to us. We gave the guy our email. He emailed us within an hour and asked where we should meet. I suggested we should meet at Dollar Tree since it was a short walk away. To my surprise, he asked to meet at my home. I lived in an apartment, so that would be inconvenient. So I said that we lived farther away. He said he could drive, but we declined. Eventually, we said it was okay to meet at Dollar Tree. But he could only meet up at 9 p.m. I said that's okay, even though it would be dark by then. He said to meet up today. My sister worked the night shift tonight. So she said I could walk there and back and to just bring my wagon so I could put the toad in it. She gave me $10 and I started walking at 8.30. I arrived just on time and I saw an old knocked up 2006 Kia. I assumed it was him. So I yelled, hey, got the tote he got out of his car and said he left it at home. He asked if I wanted to take a drive with him to his house. I said I can't because it wasn't okay with my family. He said he would drive me home and I firmly said no. He said if I came with him that I could get the tote for free. I got a very uneasy feeling. He said, hey, your address is 234 Letter Road, right? My heart dropped into my stomach. I got freaked out and ran all the way home. I got home and ran upstairs like a demon was chasing me. I got to my room and locked all the doors and windows. I also covered them with black clothing and such. That night I was shaking like crazy. And then I heard a hefty man coming up the stairs. Almost no one on my floor was up that late. And no hefty men lived there. I heard a voice and I almost fainted. Hey, you still want that tote? It's done in my car. Come help me get it. I almost puked and fainted. I looked through the peephole to see the man's back facing my door. I watched him turn around. When I covered the peephole with a black shirt I had laying around from before, the doorknob started to wiggle. I went under the sink cabinet and was silent as a worm. He started to try to kick the door down. And eventually he did. I felt like I was ready to die. I grabbed an old broom that was sitting in the cabinet. 
The kicking down of the door woke up my neighbors who came running in with a baseball bat. My neighbor whacked the guy in the face with the bat, and the guy fell to the floor. I got out with the broom and gave the man a wimpy whack before he stood up and tried to grab me. I physically jumped down the stairs and ran down the street to my sister's work like I was going to die. And I thought I was. I ran to the nurse's station and started to have a breakdown. I was crying and almost throwing up, and the nurses looked at me like I was just raped or something. I told them that a man was following me and was going to kill me. They got my sister and called the police. It turned out he was a serial rapist. Me and my sister moved, and she went away to college.